a couple months ago, my dad saw this uh, this end table design project in a old old edition of Popular Woodworking, or no, it was Fine Woodworking, and he said he really liked it, and that wouldn't mind a couple of them in the house that he's building. So I took it upon myself to make him and my mom a set of these. Three in all, hopefully. This is the first one. It's been done for a couple months. So this is a, this is all cherry. Sorry, it's pretty bright out here. And this was other than using a table saw. No, actually, I didn't even use a table saw for that. This, so this was all uh, hand tools were used, except for the band saw for cutting those out. And I'm going to be making another one of them here so you can see what the whole process is like. So the first thing I'm going to do for this, for the next little table I'm going to make is uh, I'm going to cut this piece of cherry. See right there, it's a little windy out here. And uh, this was a piece of wood that I picked up from Hopkins Sawmill, run by Steve Hopkins uh, in Hodgton. And I'll put a link to, uh, to some information about him um, and the, his sawmill. He's got a lot of great wood. This was, I mean, this is this is 18 inches across, and this is out of a single piece of cherry from up here in the county. So he's got so many things there. I definitely recommend checking him out if you're in the area. So I'm going to cut this on the uh, with the circular saw, and then uh, start planing. Okay, so this will be the top, and now I'm going to set up and start planing. So I've used a straight edge to see where the high point is on high points are on this side. It looks like right down the middle. So that's where the X's are with pencil. I don't know if you can see that. So I'm going to use uh, two different planes primarily for this. I'm going to start with this one, which is a scrub plane with a rounded blade. Um, I'm, you'll probably see me switching back and forth with this. Um, it might be too aggressive. And then I'll also be using this number four plane. And uh, this one, this blade is a little bit rounded. You might be able to tell. Um, it's mostly straight across. So that's, a, that's what I'm going to do to try to take off this crown. Then once I'm done with that, I will flip it over and take out the bottom. You might be able to see how uh, on the edge here, I've opened up the um, I've opened up the leg vise some just to support it. And I have the bench dog over here and the planing stop there. So all of that should do pretty good to secure this board so it doesn't it doesn't move around.
So now the um, the side that I finished is down. I'll return to that at some point, but I'm going to take out some of the um, some of the cup on this side now. So this is high on the edges, so I'll be working on that. So um, I've done a pretty good job of flattening both sides with the planes and there's some squirrely grain in here. Let me see if I can show you. So we've got, we've got some iffy stuff in there. Right around that knot and then there's some in some other parts here. So I'm using a uh, Stanley, this is number 80. Yeah, uh, scraping plane to take care of some of that. So this has a blade. The blade, it's, it's basically a cabinet scraper that, um, that goes in at, at this angle. And I could do all this with a hand scraper, except it would kill my hands from all the pressure and this just get, you're able to get nicer shavings with it. So I have here the three legs that are going to be under underneath the table supporting it. These two are already pretty much planed. One of them's a little thicker than the other one. I might fix that. I might just leave it. You won't notice in the finished product. And then this one I still have yet to plane. So I will be doing that now. So now I have the three legs planed, and so I'm going to go ahead and trim up. The last one that I did, I found that if I didn't, if I didn't get the top all nice and flush and the bottom all nice and even matching between the three, then it just sort of led to an uneven seam on the bottom. So I'm going to be doing that next. Uh, don't know exactly how I'm going to do that yet, but, uh, Figure it out, probably chisels.
So in order for the three legs to fit together, I need, they can't be flat on this face. They need to come to an edge um, so that they can form, with three other pieces of wood, they form a hexagon, basically, or three or six equilateral triangles. It's another way of thinking about it. So um, here I did one, you can see how that's roughly 30 degrees up and 30 degrees down. So this is a 60 degree angle in here. Um, and you know, the instructions say to use a table saw and I have been through all those instructions and it seems like kind of a pain making all the jigs. I do have a table saw. Um, but the last ones I did by hand and you know, there's a fair amount of glue filling the gaps, but it holds plenty strong because of all the surface area. So that's what I'm going to do for these as well. Um, I marked a rough center line here. Before I measured out and then connected the lines, I don't think I, that did a particularly good job. So um, this time, I'm kind of going more freehand by having this angle over here. This is 30 degrees. And and I have a, this also set to 30 degrees just to check my progress as I go. And I'm just planing with keeping an eye on this and then checking every once in a while. Um, and then once I get down to the line, I'll flip it over and do the other side.